Let's look at one more example. 3x minus this expression in parentheses here, 0.71 plus 1.2x equals 5x plus 4.73. Now, when I look at a problem like this, the answer is not at all obvious. There's an x here and here and one right here, too. There's x's all over the place. And I have no idea what number I can put in for x that would satisfy this equation. But I can find out. I'm going to solve this a step at a time and just watch. What I'll do is take this entire equation and rewrite it and I'll rewrite it a few times, but each time it will get a little bit simpler than the step before, and eventually I'll have an answer. So I'm going to start right here. Look at this. Minus this. That means I'm subtracting the 0.71 and I'm subtracting the 1.2x. So I'll rewrite this equation like this. 3x minus 0.71 minus 1.2x. And the right side, I'll leave unchanged for now. So the right side is still 5x plus 4.73. What I've done over here is I've basically distributed this negative sign. It applied to the 0.71, making it negative 0.71. And it applied to the 1.2x, making it negative 1.2x. So now look at the left side. 3x minus 0.71 minus 1.2x. Here's a 3x and here's a 1.2x. Those are both x terms. Those are like terms. They have exactly the same variable part. They're both x terms. So they can be combined and they should be combined. And don't forget that this negative sign is part of this term. I'm combining a 3x and a negative 1.2x. So you can think of it as 3x minus 1.2x. And you can probably do that mentally. 3 minus 1.2 is 1.8. So 3x minus 1.2x is 1.8x. So on the left side, I have 1.8x. That takes into account these two terms. And then I still have this minus 0.71. So I'll write that, minus 0.71. And the right side, I'll leave unchanged again for now. So now again, I have the same equation here, or what I have is mathematically equivalent to my original equation, but it's getting a little bit simpler each step. Now let's, uh, let's deal with this 0.71 here, this negative 0.71. I'm trying to simplify my equation, so if I can get rid of this, that'll make it easier. I'm going to get rid of that by adding 0.71. And if I add 0.71 to the left, I have to add 0.71 to the right. And you can see on the left that the negative 0.71 and the positive 0.71 will add up to 0. So I can just cross both of those out. Now the left side is simply 1.8x. The right side, I have this 5x. So let's write that. And then the 4.73 and the 0.71 are like terms, so I can combine those. I just need to add 4.73 and 0.71. So 3 and 1 is 4, 7 and 7 is 14. I get 5.44. So the right side is 5x plus 5.44. Now, I'm trying to find x. x shows up right here and right here. Let's get rid of one of those, and I'll get rid of the one on the right. On the right I have a 5x, so I'm going to subtract it. Subtract 5x, and I have to do the same thing on the other side too. Now on the right, the 5x and the minus 5x add up to zero. So those guys cancel each other out. That leaves me on the right side with 5.44. On the left I have 1.8x minus 5x. So I just have to do 1.8 minus 5. And 1.8 minus 5 comes out to negative 3.2. So 1.8x minus 5x is negative 3.2x. So I have negative 3.2x equals 5.44. Now look what's happened. I started with this equation up here, and I've done all this work, and I have this little equation, which is a whole lot simpler than my original equation, but it's mathematically equivalent to the original equation. I just need to solve for x now. 
And right now, x is multiplied by negative 3.2. So I just need to divide by negative 3.2. And whatever I do on one side, I do on the other. On the left, the negative 3.2 and the negative 3.2 cancel out, leaving me with x all by itself. And I've run out of room at the bottom, so I'm just going to come over here. The left side is x, and then the right side is 5.44 divided by negative 3.2. And so let's see what that says. I have 5.44 divided by negative 3.2. And I hit enter. It comes out to negative 1.7. That's my answer. X is negative 1.7. That's a long problem. But if you understand that, you understand a lot about the basic rules of algebra. And you see here that those rules and those concepts apply to decimal numbers just like they would apply to any numbers.